first guest is about a subject that we've not really talked about on Helpline. I want you to take a look at this. Alcohol was really prevalent in our family, and unfortunately back then the bottle was more important to my father than his own wife and children were. So my mom became my mother and father for me. During that time, I picked up a lot of effeminate qualities, if you will. I started realizing that I was not like the other boys being attracted now toward the girls. The other boys, they had come to reject me as my father had rejected me. And I realized that I was starting to have feelings that were different. And I went off to college and within three months, I had my first homosexual encounter. I felt love for the first time, that, that male love that I always craved. That for me began an 11 year downward spiral into the homosexual lifestyle. A woman came knocking at our door one day. It happened to be a friend of mine, Kathy. And Kathy asked if she could come and talk to me about Jesus Christ and my homosexuality. And she started at the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, be not deceived. But the key verse was verse 11, and such were some of you. And I said, are you telling me that homosexuals can change? I was born this way. She said, Stephen, no one is born gay. Homosexuality is a sin just like alcoholism, drug addiction, no greater, no worse. Uh, and I never heard that before. I didn't pray to receive Christ that day, but she left the Bible with me. And it was only two years later after Kathy had showed up at my door, I called her on the phone in tears asking her, what must I do to be saved? And I got down on my knees in tears in my partner's home and I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. But during this time, I was still struggling with the homosexual attractions. Now I prayed, I did everything. What more did I need to do to get rid of this? I confronted my dad in the kitchen when he wasn't drinking. And my father opened up and shared a lot of things with me. And that day, my father grabbed me, he hugged me, he kissed me on the cheek and he whispered in my ear, I love you. That was the day my homosexual struggle broke. Uh, I met a woman through Kathy, her best friend, who I went head over heels for. She knew I was gay uh, for two years and she was praying for me. And we're happily married now, coming up on 15 years of marriage, uh, have two beautiful children. And uh, my story is just a nightmare, which has been turned into a dream come true. And Jesus Christ is the one who gave me everything. And I just love him today. And I truly do believe in miracles. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome with me, Stephen Bennett. Hey, Steve. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I am so excited to have you on the Helpline program. Well, it is a privilege to be here with a, a man of your honor and stature. I, I praise God for it. Thank you so very much. You know, we've never attempted to talk about this subject on Helpline. Not because we wanted to avoid it, but we just never had a guest that went through the circumstances, the situations. Take us from your childhood. Absolutely. That nightmare. And what happened in your life step by step. You know, Dr. Sorrell, I grew up in a, a, a home with a mother and a father uh, who loved me, but the problem was that my dad, who I love very much today, uh, alcohol, controlled he, my father. He was an alcoholic. He was an alcoholic, and unfortunately, the bottle was more important to my father than uh, his own wife or children. And I do not blame what I went through on my father, but it definitely played a part. We understand because there's a lot of people that are watching us right now their mothers and fathers, and they themselves are bound by alcohol. Yes. They understand what we're talking about. A absolutely, and Christ is, I believe Christ is going to set so many people yes, free, I not only from it. homosexuality, but many other things. So growing up with really without a dad physically there, my mother was like a, a woman who ran into a, a house, to a burning house to save her child. She became for me my mother and father. Now, of course, she didn't play football, basketball. I just learned how to play the game of football two years ago. Wow. I watched my first Super Bowl. <laughs> uh, in any case, uh, not having that mother or father there for me, really just having my mother, uh, you know, I was made fun of. You know, I was like uh, one of the girls almost. 
Uh, I was made fun of by the other kids, you know, called queer, faggot, sissy. And the more that I heard those things, I started to believe those going through school. Uh, more of, uh, I had more friends who were girls in my life rather than guys. And I didn't know how to play any of those football games or any of the other games, so I hung around more with girls. I became one of the girls. Mm. Uh, I relied on art and gymnastics and all those things, which of course there's nothing wrong with that no, for any, right. any uh, guys. But growing up like that, I just felt isolated. I felt rejection from my father. I felt rejection from other boys. And I felt love from women, so I was naturally drawn more, more toward the girls. But then, when puberty kicked in around age 11, 12, whenever it might be, I realized I was not attracted toward the other girls, but my attraction now was toward men, toward that which I was not. I thought I was fat, I thought I was ugly, I thought I was everything. So I was now looking at the other men, and I didn't know why I was struggling with this. I, I didn't wake up one day and choose to be gay. Uh, it, it, how did this happen? Why was I like this? I kind of hid this, and I didn't grow up in a Christian home. I tried dating some girls, and I had some girlfriends, but I remember my father saying to me, how come can, you can never get a girl who is skinny or pretty? They're always ugly and fat. <laughs> you know, now, what a shallow thing for anyone to say. And I goof around and I say, listen, if anyone has ever seen my father, he's far from skinny or pretty. I love the man very much, but that's what an alcoholic does. They try to make you feel a lot lower Shame, about yourself guilt, so they can feel better about guilt, them. Guilt complex. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, Loss of self-esteem. Yes, all, all of that. All contributing to this. All of that. And so I didn't know what was wrong with having a girlfriend. And um, I ended up going off to art school in 1981. And unfortunately, I had my first homosexual encounter then. It was a very uh, attractive man, someone who gave me attention. And I realized that, you know what, all of these years I've been struggling with this. I am gay. I figured I was born this way. I gave in to that temptation and thought it was a wonderful life. And that was the first night I got drunk also. I swore I would never be like my father. And what happened? Monkey see, monkey do. And it was while you were under the influence of alcohol and out of self-control. Yes, it, it that, all happened in one in that one moment, in that, that one night. That's why I said when we started talking that there was more to this than just being gay. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It was alcohol, it led to drug abuse and... And many other things. I mean, I, I the guy dumped me after three weeks. I ended up dropping out of art school, never telling my parents why. And I came back home, found out many of my other friends were gay. We all knew it, we just never talked. They introduced me to the gay bar scene started getting involved with what, that. What is the gay bar scene? What does that mean? You know, back in the 1980s, uh, it, of course, disco music, and it, I think things have probably changed a little bit now, but it, it was disco music. It was drugs infested with um, cocaine abuse. I started doing cocaine. It was a very sensual atmosphere. You went there to, for one purpose, to come home with someone. So I was trying, I felt from my father saying this whole idea about being fat or skinny to the girlfriends, maybe that's the reason my dad never liked me. So I developed bulimia, which is more common wow. with girls, where you eat and throw up. Right. I'd go to McDonald's, have two number three value meals, and they'd be in the toilet 10 minutes later. Wow. So I, I'm not saying, this, all of this was... You went down to me. 125 pounds. Well, 135, and I'm almost 35. six feet tall. I was like a living skeleton. Mm. It was very tragic, but I lived that life for almost 11 years. Wow. Nothing I am proud of, but with over 100 men sexually, many of whom are dead today from AIDS. I've buried countless friends in the ground who have died from this horrible disease. I've seen men, one of my friends, whose fingertips were falling off. I'm not talking about his nails, his fingertips. I have seen homosexuality, if you will, in its full glory. Mm. And I, after going through a drug rehab, I nearly died from a cocaine uh, overdose and uh, being involved with alcohol for on a three three day uh, binge, um, I finally decided I needed some help, and God allowed me to see myself in the mirror for that first time and seeing myself at 135 pounds. And I, I just called for help, and I admitted myself into a drug rehab. And at that point, I saw the Lord change my life. Now, again, I was not a Christian yet, but God set me free from the drugs, the alcohol, the bulimia. But the counselor there in this program, she knew I was gay, and she said. That's the way you were born. Uh, she goes, don't tell anyone here about that, but you just need to accept who you are. And she goes, you need to get your spirituality back. So there's a little church across the street, and I went there and you know, tried to pray and, and everything. I, but I hid this from everyone. I started dating a girl who I really liked a lot. And over the next two years, I was playing, quote, the straight life. Uh, I was involved in a church youth group and all this kind of stuff. One of the leaders 
but I was still inside, I was gay, I knew it. Mm. And I met a man that I fell in love with and I began a, a three year living relationship with this guy. No drugs, no alcohol, anything, but I thought this man was everything. He was handsome, he was athletic, he was stable in his job. Uh, I mean, I had 11 apartments during this 11 years. I mean, it was just a crazy lifestyle. I thought God had given me the man of my dreams wow. because I came out of all of this. And then all of a sudden, a knock comes at my door, and it's my friend Kathy, a girl who I'd known for years, and she had become a Christian. She was born again. She was saved. We used to mock Christians. Yeah. Oh, the believers, we'd make fun yeah. of them all yeah. the time. Well, here she is standing at my door with a Bible. Now, this girl used to practice soft witchcraft, if you will, tell the future, reading my cards. So here I say, you know, she shows up and says, Steve, can I come and talk to you about Jesus and about your homosexuality? So here I'm looking, thinking, here's Witch Hazel at my door trying to tell me about <laughs> Christ. So I asked her to come inside, and uh, she opened up the Word of God. And if you want to take a homosexual off, which I don't encourage you to right. do, she started at Leviticus 18 or Leviticus 20. Right. You know, a man shall not lie with another man as with right. a woman. Started right. going through every single Bible verse, and my face is getting red, until she finally came to the verse we saw in that uh, beginning where it's in 1 yeah. Corinthians 6, 9 to 11, right. where it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And it goes on to list homosexuals. But, and such were some of you. And I said, to, are you telling me that homosexuals can change? I was born this way. She said, Stephen, no one is born that way. And so for that first time, I really knew the truth. And I didn't pray with her to receive Christ. She left the Bible with me. And over the next two, maybe year and a half or so, while my partner was on the end of the bed doing his sit-ups, I would be in the, the, trying to read the Bible. And little by little, that word of God started sinking inside to me. Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So I'd be in the bathroom on our bathroom floor praying for forgiveness to a God I didn't even know because I knew what was going to happen when I got back in that bed. And it was finally... So I, these, this was going on. A tug of war. If oh, you imagine the Lord. God and Satan on the shoulder. But it was after a year that Kathy showed up, that word of God, it, I tell, tell everyone jokingly, it was that poison. She did, set that Bible in there. It started to change me from well, the inside out. Amen. And it was in 1992... Uh, that I prayed with Kathy on the phone and I accepted Jesus Christ. She said, Stephen, you saw what God did in your life, how he got rid of the drugs, the alcohol, and the bulimia. I want you to pray now and ask Christ into your heart. He can set you free from everything. Just give him, uh, give him your life. I didn't understand anything, but that day I prayed and it was full repentance. I was, uh, like the Bible says, no, if not that the goodness of the Lord leadeth thee to repentance. Mm -hmm. I accepted Christ. I was so heartbroken for my sin. Not only homosexuality, everything. I was saved in my partner's home that day on the telephone. And about wow. three months after that, I dealt with my root issues with my... <laughs> Amen. Amen. I dealt with my root issue, which stemmed from a broken relationship with my father. As Christ forgave me that day unconditionally for all in my sin, past, present, and future, I now went to my father and I forgave my father and talked with him. And that day, not even realizing anything, but my father, I said, why did you always say I was ugly, stupid, no good, all this kind of stuff? And my father opened up and shared something with me. He said, Steve, I loved you more than anything. This is when I was 28. He said, when you were born, you were my first child. I loved you more than anything, but your mother chose to name you after her father, my grandfather, and he said, it broke my heart. And he said, when your sister came along a year later, he said, now this is my child, and that's theirs. And he said, that's the way I've treated you for the last 28 years. And he said, but it's too late. And here I am blubbering like a baby in the kitchen. I said, it's too late. He said, Dad, I love you more than anything. I said, don't ever put me down again. You're my father and I love you. And that day, my father reached out his arms. He grabbed me, he hugged me, he kissed me on the cheek, and Dr. Searle, he whispered into my ear, I love you. That was the day I was set free from homosexuality. God has done such a, a, a wonderful miracle in my life, which he offers to anyone who wants it right now. And, and they can have it. Now, listen, we're going to do something on the program. I want you to hold the rest of the story because we have a surprise for everybody here on the helpline. Your darling wife yes. is here. And we're going to bring her out in just a little moment. And we're going to continue the rest of the story. And don't you dare touch that dial.